All right, we are live. Uh, welcome to our builder series part four, I believe. I believe we are part four. Uh, I am Danielle Plesky Brown with the Kaza Group, uh, and this is my colleague Raj Tamang. Um, who, Raj, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, great. My name is Raj Tamang, again with the Green Valley Custom Builders. Yeah, we're a custom home builder, spec home builder. And the person that I love helping people. So this is part of all things that I would like to work, you know, help our other fellow investors or agents who need help with the builders. Um, and that's what we're doing. Absolutely. So our goal in this builder series is to help you as a potential flipper, builder, developer, uh, learn how to better your craft or even get started uh, and ans ask us any questions. Uh, I am an investor agent and I run the investor agent division of the Casa Group uh, and I'm a grid ambassador much like Raj is. And one of my goals is to help new investors uh, figure out how to get in the game uh, and make as few mistakes as possible. Mistakes are inevitable, but if you can avoid yeah. the really big ones, then you can stay in the game. So I'm really excited for this topic today because we've actually been getting a lot of questions about this in the Grid Facebook group. Um, mm -hmm. First and foremost is uh, design, but permits. So many questions about permitting, expediting, uh, either whether you're in Northern Virginia or DC or Maryland, um, so Raj, you have much more experience with the actual nitty gritty of getting permits both submitted and approved. I work with a mm -hmm. lot of clients, um, where we study that as part of the process, but it's not something I personally have to do myself. So I'm probably going to ask you a lot of questions and really lean on you for your guidance and expertise here. Um, and I'm going to try to stay attuned on Facebook. If you are watching us live, please feel free to comment and yep. ask us questions and we'd be happy to answer as best we can. Okay, so let's talk about design. Uh, I guess let's start at the design process, right? Because yeah. in order for you to even start with getting a permit or know what you're applying for a permit for, you actually have to start all the way at the design process, right? Mm -hmm. Or wh where would you start? So um, so let's just step back one more, one more step. Um, last week we talked about finding a lot, right? So yes. finding a lot, make sure there's a suite of a lot where you can build a house of the floor plan and specification you want in your house, right? So once you're finding a lot, now you have to finalize your house plans and specifications. Um, that's the design process, okay? So, you know, first, first of all, for any residential construction, depending on the size and the complications, um, typically, you have to hire a designer or architect to mm -hmm. design house, right? So when you have an architect, basically a lot of people ask me about, hey, why you need an engineer and an architect to build a house? Because their role and their responsibility are different. Um, because the, when you say architect or designer, they prepare the plan, how the mm -hmm. house looks like, right? From inside, outside, the detailing, layout, that's the responsibility of the architect. So you have a designer, you could be interior designer who does all the selections, right? Finishing mm -hmm. selections, what kind of tiles, what kind of, uh, you know, fixtures, uh, cabinets, um, appliances, all that are part of the design where most of the architect, they do it, right? Now, yeah. you, now mean, you mean submitting the permits themselves? Before you submit. so. There's a two thing you have to remember the permit set is it's a different for construction set. Um, sometimes in a residential construction, depending on how big it is, a smaller project, you don't have to have separate set for your permit set and construction. But mm -hmm. if it's really big and complicated project, uh, you might have to have a separate set because with a permit, you don't have to put all the details and drawing and connections and things like that. Uh, specification mm -hmm. you don't have to prepare, right? You pretty much you need a floor plans. Um, when you say floor plan, basically you have a let's say if you have a basement, you have a basement floor plan. Uh, on the floor plan, you have to show all the doors and the windows and lay out all the dimension correctly done. Yeah. Then you go up to the floor above, which is first floor, do the same thing, and second floor. Then you have to have at least four building elevations. So you know, typically you have a front elevation left and right and the back side. And then you have to have at least one or two building section 
cross section of the entire building. Uh, on the cross section, you typically say, hey, what kind of, you know, if you have any concrete walls or block walls, if you have, uh, you know, structural, you, you will see more like structural details on the structural drawing, but here it's just more like graphically, graphically you have to show your construction. Let's say you have a basement, then you have a probably concrete basement wall and footing and slab. Then your mm -hmm. floor system are TZI or you have, you know, it's equal floor trusses, it depends, you have to show it correctly, right? Then you have a wall right. construction, it's a two by four or two by six construction. You have an insulation, if you have drywall inside, which is most likely drywall. Then outside, you have to show what kind of finishing you have outside. You have a side, siding, it's a vinyl siding or hardy plank siding. Or if you have a stucco, um, now with the stucco, you have to show different details saying how the stucco is installed. Uh, they would mm -hmm. like to see it. Uh, this is a recent development, couple of years, being with Fairfax County and other local county here in, in Northern Virginia, where I'm more familiar with. Um, from design as an engineer, I'm also a structural engineer, I, as I said before, so I have a license in Maryland, Virginia, and DC, so I work all three states. Uh, wow. As an engineer, yeah, yeah, so, um, but as a builder, we only work in Northern Virginia because we're too busy working locally, so I don't want, you know, we have not thought of expanding outside. So all this process, for me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we may expand down the road, but we've been very busy. So, you know, I, I'm very familiar with Fairfax County uh, because that's why I would say 90, 75 or 80% of our construction in Fairfax County. So we're very familiar with it. Um, and Arlington County and other local counties like, you know, Prince William County, Loudoun County, we're very familiar with the process, right? Um, yeah. so, um, so those are the things we have, to, we have to keep in mind, right? You have all the architectural plans, and permit set and some of the details are not, that's a permit set, but your construction set may need to be a little bit more details, right? Mm -hmm. How- And this is for more of like a full new construction home, right? You're describing- This is, this is all full new construction home, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, if you do addition on a project, if you do a pop-top additions, you pretty much have to do all the full drawing anyway. Um, mm -hmm. The difference is if you are doing additions or pop top, you have to prepare the existing plan and the proposed plan, two sets, okay? Because the reviewer, they would like to see what is the proposed or, or what is the existing. Instead of the existing, we call a demo plan. So in the demo plan, each floor plan, we have to show what you are demoing. Mm -hmm. And the new plan, you show what will the plan look like once you demo, right? Demo list a certain part of the doors and windows, remove, make it, and especially with the new, um, all this open floor plan concept of modern design, all yeah. the new all old houses you work with, I work with a lot of other contractors or do a lot of innovations. The first thing they're gonna ask me, hey, because open floor concept means there is no walls and anything they want on the main level at least, right? Yeah. And all the walls and posts or anything you see between your kitchen and dining room or dining room, living room, all that walls we have to remove, right? Yeah, so, so your beams and structure there is really important to define. Exactly. So first thing they need to understand or find out if the wall they are planning to remove, is that a bearing wall or not? Because if it's not wood bearing wall, yes, you can take it out. But if it's a wood bearing wall, you can, right? You have to probably design beam and post to replace uh, the wall, then eventually support the course with the above. So whatever you do, even if it is a non-load bearing wall, you have to have a licensed structural engineer like me to certify it. Otherwise, contract or the county will not give you a permit. Okay. Yeah. So let's sure. say you have a you have a contract. They don't want the house to collapse on itself. <laughs> exactly. Also for liability reason too, especially county. You know they don't want to take any liability. And even if you have a contractor who has like a 20, 30 year experience, and they know that this is not load bearing wall means you can take it out, but you don't have that authority and uh, and license to say and certify that's not load bearing. So you, you still have to hire someone like me come to the site and prepare the plan saying, okay, this is the wall. 
we have to remove, we plan to remove, and this is not load bearing, not load bearing while, and we certify it, right? We stamp it. Um, if it is load bearing while, then we say, okay, what are we gonna do? We have to specify the process of taking out, you know, replacing the existing wall with a new beam and post. Then you have to think about that post. If you are doing all these changes on the main level and there's a basement, you have to think about the post have to be continued down to the basement and the resting on a footing. You cannot just leave that post somewhere hanging on the first floor, right? Or you have to have a, some kind of a steel guarder beam on the main level. That's something, that's why you have to have a structural environment involved, make sure that it's just structurally safe, all the changes you have made. All that should well, be- And that problem. also applies for de uh, the demo plans that you're talking about. Because they don't want you to just go in there and rip stuff down. Because what if it actually is holding stuff up? That's why they want you yeah. to say, this is what we plan on taking down. So that while you're in between demo and construction, when you start rebuilding or expanding or whatever, that the whole structure doesn't collapse and actually cause a real danger um, to yeah. people, the structure, the lot, all that kind of stuff. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So if, down the road, I, I'm going to discuss with you. I have a one presentation about how to easily find out the wall is load bearing wall or not. There are a few tricks. Yeah, um, I, I think there's a lot of people that would want to know that, yeah. especially directly from an engineer. Yeah, so I've been doing this since 2003. So you're talking about maybe, you know, 17, 18 years. And I do a lot of this type of design. I don't do too many because I'm too busy, but we have an engineer in our office when the contractor calls us, hey, can you help us out? We help us out preparing the plans and getting permit. Um, so I have that. I'll be happy to do it down the road. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think we'll definitely do that. I like that as a topic for sure. Because I think that would be very helpful. on the wall, wall, I'm sure, isn't enough of a test to feel like it's <laughs> yeah. not very <laughs> Awesome. That's, that's okay, right. So, that's right. So. so let's just say, all right, so you have a design that's structurally sound. You speak with an engineer and you get whoever you need to help you with plans. Um, and that could either be for a flip or a complete new renovated home. So sometimes depending on what you're going to do, if you're moving MEPS, right? Mechanical, engineering, plumbing, electrical plumbing, any of that, you're going to need to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing, especially with an architect. So for anybody there, we are happy to refer you to a couple of people that are fantastic. Raj works with a fantastic design firm uh, regularly that helps with plans and things like that. And sometimes depending on who is writing up your plans, they also can help you with expediting your permits to the county. Now I know expediting permits is almost an oxymoron right now um, because yeah. of, well, we used to say COVID, but I'm not even sure if that's the case. I think now it's just a little bit more time conserving, uh, time consuming because it started with COVID and now I think we're becoming, this is the new process. Like they're trying to create some uh, consistency on the back end and have it all be digital as possible. At least I'm seeing that a lot in DC. Um, mm -hmm. And then certain counties I think are taking a little bit longer than others with permits. Um, and you would know about that. And I know if we talked about that in other lives that we've done, um, but so you get your permits, you get your plans, or sorry, you get your plans, you submit for your permits, then you get them back. Now what happens? What other permits should you be applying for? Do you need to consider? Um, do all of them are inclusive when you put them in? So say like, say you need to make a new driveway and you need a curb cut. Uh, who would you ask for a permit with that or something like that? Or say you put a, you extend a dry, uh, not a driveway, a garage. And then you add a driveway and you need a new curb cut. What what would the process like that look like? Yeah, then that's a very good question. Um, yeah, because so also let me go back one more time about the architect. Some of the even yeah. in some of the investors builder they didn't understand the responsibility of the architect, the engineer. Because the architect, sometimes they're the firm that even the architect, they also do design, even though that's not their expertise. And I have a situation, some of the builders, they're trying to save money, I had an architect do all the design, um, and they ended up paying much more than what they should because, you know, because that's not the expertise, right? So yeah. you have to really understand, I, I'm not saying, okay, I'm an engineer, I'm a structural engineer, I'm trying to convince our listener to hire a structural engineer or hire me, but I'm just trying to tell them, hey, 
think a little bit before you uh, decide one thing to other in terms of design. Because say, the structural engineer like me, the purpose of a structural engineer is to make sure that it's structurally sound. Yeah. So it's not really structurally sound, but also all the design has to be most economical. Right? I'll give you an example. I can design a steel beam very heavy. So it's a set, right? Give you an example, maybe double eight by 21 or 12 by 56 or 45, let's say W. When it says steel beam, W8 by 21, it's just pretty standard, um, is typically eight inch deep. W8 by 21 means eight inch deep. Mm -hmm. And its weight is about 20 on, 21 pounds per linear foot. That's how it is. Okay? okay. So if, it is, if it is 12 by 45, if you say W is steel beam 12 by 45, that means you're 12 inches deep, approximately, mm -hmm. and 45 pounds per linear foot. Oh, That's so the support. So you have to understand when you order the steel, if you have a W8, means 8 inch beam, 8 inch deep beam, mm -hmm. or W12 means 12 inch deep beam. But if you go W8, by instead of 21, let's say W8 by 21, or you go W12 by maybe 13. Remember, you said 12 inch deep, it's only 30, 30 pounds per linear foot. So even that W12 yeah. is cheaper because even it's deeper, but it's cheaper. So deeper, it. the deeper, deeper, cheaper, deeper. and stronger. <laughs> Correct. So you have a cheaper and stronger. So people automatically, oh, this is deeper beam, too expensive. Oh, I don't want to go to 12 inch. Let's just stay with eight, double eight. No. So it depends sometimes because if, if you have a you know drop beam, which is a bulkhead, then instead of W8, uh, W8 versus W12, because 12 means means you have 12 inch drop, W8 means eight inch drop. So you don't want to have a 12 inch drip, uh, you know, drop, which is a bulkhead. Um, so all this design is responsible to structural engineer. So hiring a structural engineer paying two, three thousand dollars more, eventually I guarantee you, you will be saving more than five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars on any house. But the problem is they are trying to avoid paying a structural engineer five thousand dollars and having the architect to design it. But they will design it, but over design it, and you would be paying yeah. as a contractor or as an owner ten thousand, twenty thousand more. You know, it happened to me. Yeah, there are so many, so many cases I can show that in my career as, as a structural engineer, engineer for seventeen, eighteen years, they try to save money, but actually they are expending more in the other way. You know, so same yeah, thing. That's such yeah. a good tip. That's yeah, so that's a good tip. Talk to a structural engineer, you know, talking with a let's say, give me a call, for example, I'll be happy to give you a consultation. You know, you don't have to pay me for half an hour. I'll be happy to talk to you. And, and you know, things like that, even get a perspective from a structural engineer, uh, even if you don't decide to hire eventually, you know, but uh, to me, my experience is worth it. Then sometimes mm -hmm. you have to hire, of course, you have to hire a geotechnical engineer. If the soil is bad, you have to hire it. So as an yeah. engineer, it's a geotechnical engineer. So when you show grading plans, you have to have a civil engineer, which is different from a structural engineer or a geotechnical engineer. So all yeah, so different- to me what the difference of those are, just for those that are unavailable, uh, un unaware of like the key differences in a civil engineer versus a structural engineer. So a structural engineer is involved designing structure of the building, the structural mm -hmm. members. So when I say structural members in the house, it's starting from all the roof trusses, beams, headers, jack starts, um, then floor framing, you have a concrete wall, footing, you know, you have a footing, you have to specify thickness, uh, reinforcement, all that's detailed, structural details is, is a structural engineer. Um, the civil engineer does anything outside, site work, grading plans, so when you say grading plan, when you build a new house, you have to have a civil engineer. You can't, uh, you, you can't get away. So you have to have a civil engineer to the grading plan. And grading plan will basically show, hey, this is the existing house. This is the location of the existing house. This is a footprint of the existing house on your whole lot. Yeah. Because you're and building it just to build it. 
<laughs> yeah, the building floor plan does not show anything about the lot you are building on, but the grading plan will show the entire lot you own and the location of those structures. If you have a garage, where the garage mm -hmm. is, if you have a driveway, where's the driveway? If there's a location of the driveway, exactly. All those details, you have, if you have a retaining wall, if you have a patio, you have a bedding deck, if you have a swimming pool, um, all that planter box, all that things is shown on the grading plan. Got it. Which okay. you will see the location and size of all those structure on the entire lot. But now you asked me about getting a permit if you have to break existing driveway or make the driveway wider or mm -hmm. things like that. Um, Typically in our area, we go with the VDOT, right? VDOT is Virginia Department of Transportation. So if yeah. you have an existing driveway, you have to relocate. Okay, you have to go VDOT. Mm -hmm. If you have an existing driveway, you are trying to make it wider, you have to go VDOT. Um, it. But again, in um, not Mac Vienna, um, town of Vienna, you go with the town of Vienna. So it's a little bit different. Like whoever's and, the most local authority, you would probably go to. It, it depends who the local or the town of Vienna would like to deal with that. That's different, but pretty much all the rest is Vida on the road. Yeah. Anything you do next to the road. Also, you have to get a Vida permit. Let's say um, you have an old house. We do a lot of teardowns of an old house and build a new house. Uh, one of the requirements now is that the county requires us to do video. Um, of the existing sewer lateral from the main sewer line mm -hmm. to the house. Uh, when you build a new house, they make sure they want us to make sure that you know sewer lateral is it's okay, it's not broken or it's not leaking. Yeah, super so, important, especially with the sewer line, super that, important and not leak. <laughs> that's that's really important. Exactly, you're right. So then the only way to find out you have to do the video accident, right? Video uh, recording. Our plumber, outdoor plumber, they do all that we have to submit. If there's a problem, then we have to replace, right? If the part of the sewer lateral is on the road, then you have to still go VDAT. You have to get a permit from VDAT too. Got it. Because it's not on the property, it's on the public property. On the public property on the main road. Then same thing. Sometimes you have Dominion, which is electric power in this area. If you have electric or Washington gas, they have to extend their line through the through the road, uh, means they also have to get a separate permit with VDAT. So VDAT, yeah. there are different permit. The utility company may have to get their permit depend depends uh, depending on the scope of work. Um, as a contractor yourself, you have to get the permit um, if you are doing two things. Like if you look at the driveway, or you make the existing driveway wider, or I would say three things. If you don't have any house before vacant lot means you have to build a new driveway yep. and you still have to get a permit that's a part of the VDOT process yeah got it and and would the same i'm kind of assuming the same thing would go say if like you wanted gas in your house and there was gas lines in the street and you wanted to just run it up to the house like same kind of idea correct yeah it, 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 anytime you touch the main road you have to go to VDOT. yeah all right permit. that makes that totally makes sense but that would be an additional permit to all of the other civil and structural engineer permits that you're going to be preparing uh, and also submitting. So yeah. key point to know is your permitting process is likely not all within one, um, one county or city or locality. It really could be with several and that's really how to get it done. And you should plan ahead, hey, who do I need to get approval from? And how long are those approvals typically taking, especially when you're doing a pro forma on a project? Um, awesome. So I think that was really helpful. What mm -hmm. about um, other types of permits? Is, are, is there anything else that we should discuss that we haven't kind of touched on? Because um, if not, then we can go into budgeting and maybe also uh, what kind of insurance you need for these projects. Yeah. So when you say building permit, okay, um, there are two permits you have to remember. If you have an existing house, old mm -hmm. house, you're doing, uh, you are doing teardowns and, you know, tear down the old house, build new house, you have to get two permits. One is demo permit yep. and you have the new construction permit. So with the demo permit, once you get the permit, 
and I find some builders, they don't pay attention, easy to forget, is that once you have the permit, you have to close the permit. You can't keep the permit open, right? No, because so, then you don't have final inspections done and you can't get a CFO and it's not good. Not good, exactly. <laughs> so with the demo permit, you demo the house, you start building a new house and you completely forgot that your demo permit should be closed. So what you have to do at some point is that when the demo is done, new construction is started, call the county to close the demo permit. So they will do the demo inspections and they see it, okay, you have started building new house means of course all the house is gone, but that way the demo permit is closed. Yeah, so you have to do a demo permit. Now with the building permit, so that's the main permit is a building permit, which is new construction permit. Then you have all the trades have to pull a permit, starting electrical. Electrician, they have to their one permit. I'm a builder, I'm a class A builder, but I'm not master plumber, master electrician, or uh, HBAC, so I'm not licensed, even though I'm class A builder, but I'm not licensed to pull those trade permits. Mm. So all my subcontractors, um, you know, do a trade, electrical, plumbing, HBAC, and gas, they have to be licensed and insured. Um, and they have to also pull a permit separately. But they pull a permit under main permit, which is a new construction permit. Got it. So and even as a GC, your subcontractors are really the ones that are pulling the permits permit. as you go. And if you're committing to work with them, you want to make sure they pull those permits early yeah. and correctly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And also the good thing is that you know, the permit process in Fairfax County, especially what I deal most, is um, you, now online system, it takes like three, four months, but it has come down now, which is good news. It looks like around two, two and a half months. And even I think we talked about this better. before. Yeah, we talked about this before. The inspection, they were doing FaceTime online, like virtual inspections. FaceTime mm -hmm. now, I had a final inspection for one house um, yesterday. I talked to the inspector, I'm coming to the site. I was like, without a chance now. But now yeah. they are start doing in field inspection in Fairfax County. Um, so yeah. you have to be prepared because, you know, on-site inspection versus virtual are two different things, right? Yes. Um, so it looks like the, now it looks like the systems are, and also timeline-wise is getting improved. So hopefully, you know, it's better, um, but once you get a billing permit, a trade permit is you don't have to wait. You just apply, get the permit at the same time, like a couple of hours, same day. But all those That's permits, yeah, yeah, which is good. So all those permits, you have to pull a permit. Even sometimes you have to remember, um, let's say you have a new house um, and you have a basement. Um, you have to have a plumber get a separate permit for underground because all the pipelines, anything you have to – uh, lay underground on the basement. Let's say if you have a, uh, you know, all the, you know, bathrooms and toilets, um, you know, water line, hot water, cold, all those things you have to probably, you know, if you have a sump pump or shore pump, all that you have to do it before you put a slab. So for that, yeah. Yeah, your plumber has to get that permit before in hand. Yeah. Um, and those things you can coordinate with your plumber, you know, if they have done it before, I'm sure they know the process. Um, but again, you know, I do it myself. So I, you know, I understand that I, sometimes they are too busy. If you just assume they did it, most likely they did not. So I have to keep following up, make sure they did it on the schedule. Um, but if you know they have to do it, then you can follow up, right? But if you don't know, then, you know, you don't know what to follow up with your subcontract or, or, or you know, trade contractors. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay. So that, I think that's a really good tip or something to understand as someone, mm -hmm. even if you're flipping a property, is that you really need to be leaning on these subcontractors. They need to be licensed, insured, and able to uh, submit these permits on your behalf. Whether you, I know in Virginia, depending on the scale of the project, you can't really act as your own D GC. Same thing kind of in DC as well. Um, so just be aware of that and make sure that you're ahead of it. and you should be fine. It, so let's talk about a little bit in, in terms of timing, because we've talked a lot about different permits and we said, mm -hmm. oh, you're an electrician, you probably get a permit in a day or two, but building permits, structural engineer permits, demo permits, those are the ones that are more like two to three months. Correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. 
Because not all permits are created equal. And depending on the locality you're dealing with, it really could change quite a bit. Um, and if you get one little, you know, hookup on something, you could get stuck for quite a while. I've had a few clients in DC where some little mistake in paperwork has cost them two additional months in carrying costs where they had a stop work order and then they just have to wait it out. Like there's no way you can't go to the, the city anymore with a bottle of wine or some cookies and hope that they're going <laughs> to get your paperwork right, right mm -hmm. there then and there for you anymore. It's much more like you're kind of at the whim of these systems and whatever ticket number you pull to be in line uh, to have this help done. So making sure double checking your paperwork, double checking your permits, making mm -hmm. sure they're done. The big permits, the ones that take the longest at the beginning, and then throughout the process, just being as thorough as possible is going to help avoid some of those hookups, uh, those, uh, not hookups, no, uh, holdups. Hiccups, hiccups, maybe. Yeah. Um, Daniel, you, you're hundred percent right. So something that's why, for example, you know, we're a design build company. We build homes, all the permit, we pull a permit ourselves, but because we know what to do. Um, but we don't pull a permit for a client. So this is what I would advise if you're an investor or homeowner or a client who are trying to do this project first time and you don't know the process. Yeah. I highly recommend hiring a permit expediter because it's yes. worth it. I'm telling you, you're trying to save a couple of thousand dollars, but your headache, um, it's not worth it. And probably you'll be you know, trying to figure it this out. It actually costs you a lot more. And if you've never submitted permits for yourself before, yeah. you could actually end up in this back and forth with whatever locality you're trying to get them approved with. And if there's even tiny errors, they could cost you weeks or months in your timeline. And carrying costs are often far more. Like one month of carrying costs is probably a lot more than what it's going to cost you to hire that expediter. Um, so really leverage experts in this and, and it also a lot of time. happens because of expediters they already they've been doing this for a long time with the county they may already know a lot of people and inspectors or reviewers on the county yes. and they can process and they can communicate quickly with them because they already know they already have the relation for me for example with the fairfax county i've been doing design and build with them for the last 15 20 15 16 years I mean, personally, I know a lot of reviewers and a lot of inspectors. And sometimes if there's an issue, I even email them and call them directly. But, you know, so that's, that's nice. But that, that comes with that, a that, whole lot of years of working together. <laughs> it does. And sometimes I have some of the reviewers. I don't say we become a friend. We sometimes hang out. They're even asking for help. Hey, I want to build this and that. I just want to help that. Um, yeah. It's not a bribe, but I'm just want to make sure that it's not a bribe. I'm just helping as a, as a human being, you know, because they know yeah. where I'm here. There's no, you know, harm in asking for help. Um, but then, like I said, sometimes because of that, they call me directly. Say, Raza, I have your, I'm looking at a drawing. I'm reviewing it for you. Uh, these are the things I say. I just wanted to give a heads up. And I said, perfect. I appreciate it. So by the time yeah. I have a review comments, it's already ready. You know, those things can really help to expedite your process. So I would yeah. say, you know, you know, I was talking, I don't know, this is in a different topic is that there's a book called, you know, Who Not How. I yeah, know it, I read that this. recently. Yeah, so that's an amazing book because most of the people will try to figure out how, but you know, that may take a long time and sometimes you're tired, maybe even, maybe a reason for you to give up because it's too much to figure it out, right? But yeah, or you're just rule. not the best person to figure it out, and that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. You're right. That's what I believe. Yeah. So finding the right people in your team, finding the right people to do the right thing will definitely help your life, make your life yeah. easier and at the time and quicker. You know. So where do you? Because I get this question all the time, and I'm, I'm always a little. Uh, not sure who to really refer when I get asked where, you know, who's your favorite expediter? Who's your favorite expediter in DC? Because a lot of the expediters I have actually worked with tend to work with architects or they, mm -hmm. they work at an architectural firm and that firm is both doing the drawings, doing the plans, writing up the permits. And then that expediter is the one who like carries it to the finish line, right? 
But sometimes you don't need a whole architectural firm to do your permits for you. Sometimes you're really just looking for someone to help with your permitting process. Where would someone find somebody who could help with that? Or are there any companies that you're aware of that you could recommend? Because I'll be honest, I don't, I haven't worked with anybody specifically enough to be like, oh, you should definitely work with this specific expediter who wasn't with a different firm. You know what I mean? So I've always yeah. been hesitant to do it. You know, I, as I say again, my experience uh, experience in, in construction permits is mostly in Fairfax County in Northern Virginia. I yeah. do a lot of instructional design and consulting, but then we don't do anything about a permit. So we work with architects and builders and they do all of it. And I know there are some architect and builder I work with in DC, they handle everything like you said, but they are more complete package. And yeah. I don't know any permit expediter. But that in Virginia and Fairfax County, I, I know a few. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I don't have that information right now, but if somebody is looking, somebody needs that information, they probably can drop in their email address or something. I'll be happy to yeah. send their information. Yeah, yeah. But like we'll I said, you know, I'll post later with a couple of recommendations that we find yeah. or that we get referred to. But if you are watching this video, watching this, now, please do comment in the post with, you know, who you've used and who you've had success with. Because we actually yeah. had this question, Ingrid, this week. And I was like, okay, let's see yeah. what we can do. But yeah, yeah a lot of times they work at architectural firms. But it maybe if you yeah. call those architectural firms, they can just offer you expediting services. So there might be something to discuss. Or um, They may already know someone who can. Usually they might have a contact who would help them with expediting, permit expediting. Mm -hmm. So it, as I say again, you have to call, right? If you, that's something part of the real estate, any business is that, that you should call, you know? Yeah. If you if you don't call, you never get that information. If you don't get it, you don't get it. But you know, you should at least call, call contractor. You know, the Google, you can go list of structural engineers. Um, even some of these, all this, I think, I believe if you go to the county um, or DCRA website, they might actually have a list. Oh, um, okay. I never because, looked on the website for that. So that's be, cool. Because we do a lot of third party inspections for new construction, especially for concrete and, and outside work, like um, concrete and groundwork. We come mm -hmm. to take forever. So for us, it's easy to deal with the third party inspector and pay them. Um, but they have to be approved by the county. Mm -hmm. and, and if you go to the county, they have a list of all those agencies who provide third party inspections and you can call them. I'm not sure about permit expediter, but I believe you might. I may have to check it out, to be honest with you, because this is something they, they do, like third party inspections. So it, maybe it should be the company or agency approved by the county or city. All right. Well, the search is still on. We will we will find the best expediters to recommend and third party inspectors. Um, and we'll include those in the comments uh, yeah. for this. So if we haven't found it soon, please hold us accountable in helping you guys and finding that. Um, so Raj, we're getting close to 40 minutes on this because it's a big topic. And I think yeah. there's a lot of people that have a ton of interest in this. Is there anything else you think that we missed that we should go over? Or have we really kind of overall encompassed everything that we should talk about today? Um, if you really talk about this, it's going to take like a few more hours to be honest. Hours and hours and hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not a simple topic. Um, you know, we, we say that we're going to talk about a budget, but that budget could be one hour to be honest with you. Maybe we have to allocate other two items, um, builders yeah. risk and, and other one, um, bond, stuff like that later. Mm -hmm. But overall, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Make sure you hire a, a designer or architect who is familiar with a, with a project, right? There are a lot of architects, but they might have, might never have done anything in residential construction. So you hire an architect, but who has no experience in residential construction and building design, we have only done commercial project. That's not the helpful, right? Yeah, so finding your finding a right professional, find an architect or designer, you know, send me, if you need help, let me know. I know, of course, you know, I've been doing this design for 17, 18 years. I know a lot of local architects and designers I work with uh, because we are, for them, we are consultant. We do structural consulting work and design drawing. So I know a lot of those designers, I'll be happy to refer to you. 
So finding the right people, having the right team, and finding the right people through the process will actually make your life easy um, and more effectively, right? Having a permanent speed diver, for example. Same thing with all having a contractor, subcontractors. Um, so that's that's what I would say. You know, you always have to talk to people. Don't hate to ask people, and people will love you. Most of the people will love to help you. I would say. You know, they, they absolutely they love to share what they know. And for me personally, for me, I love helping people and sharing what I know. I don't want to because I, I truly believe, like I said before, there's enough. Like Mahatma Gandhi said, there's enough for everybody's need. Okay, I don't have to worry about competition or taking away somebody taking away my project. No, there's enough for everybody, yeah. need, but not enough for anybody's greed. So if you call me, to be honest with you, you need a contractor or builder or you need a plumber, I'll be happy. If you ask me, give me the whole thing, that's maybe too much, right? I have a client and they say, I want to build a new house myself. Give me the whole list. Dude, I'm prepared this list for the last 40 years. You know, yeah. I think it's a little bit too much. There's for a value there. The There's a pretty large value there. Yeah. But, you know, but if you ask me like one or two items, like you need a contractor for a plumber or electrician or cabinet or flooring, Things like that, I'll be happy to refer to you um, and help you out. So awesome. So if you're looking for any other referrals, please do leave a comment and Raj and I will personally get back to you with some contacts and referrals that uh, that we both have had really a lot of success with. Yeah. Awesome. Well, okay. Raj, this was another fantastic episode. I think we have outlined our next two episodes. I think next week, why don't we talk about budgeting for permits and insurance and uh, bonds like you were talking about before, because I think that really finishes the conversation from this week. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe in a couple of weeks, we can go on location and do uh, a live where we actually can tell if you think that's the best, tell how a wall is either load bearing or not and you know knock on walls or whatever your process is <laughs> yeah kidding. yeah we can figure it out yeah we'll see okay great okay. well thank you everybody again i'm danielle plesky brown with the casa group and this is rush Tmang with you want to go evergreen yeah oh, well, can you freeze oh <laughs> we're good okay sounds good guys thank you I, it was a very good uh I guess very productive conversation. Um, but again, all this we cannot talk in half an hour. There's a lot more. Any um, questions you have, you know, send us a email or give us a phone call. If you go to our website, Green Valley, you have a phone number, contact address, everything. So we'll 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 love to help you out. So perfect. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna actually post um, Raj's companies link in the comments as well so you guys can check out his website and reach out to him if you need anything Sounds all good. right That's awesome perfect. see you guys next week bye, bye. Raj. bye.